what what we're against, what we're up against is pretty um, appalling. Um, and I'm just going to play a clip uh, of Steve Headley, what's, what Steve Headley has had to experience in the past uh, couple of weeks. Here we go. Yeah. Before the world, this is talking rubbish. Anyone has recognised that there is a genocide going on. This is what we're not talking rubbish. Talking rubbish. You are, you say, the Palestinian genocide, people it's not are genocide. an occupied people and they've got a they right were. to defend themselves. They are themselves. now. No, no, they were in 2005. They were totally free in 2005. Hamas didn't exist when 1947 when you started occupying their land. Hamas didn't exist. I mean, well, Netanyahu is making this is the so same statements about Hamas that he did about the PLO. They're so very similar. Wrong. Very, very similar. Same so thing. Wrong. Terrorists. Oh, really? Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Your you state is a terrorist out? state, isn't it, Ash? That's what? the reality. No. Britain's a terrorist state. No. America's oh, a terrorist that, state. Then? And Israel is a terrorist so state. Think that? This is the reality of it. Yes, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. Yes, they are. Well, what, you know, it's not a terrorist state, is it? It's These a terrorist people... state. Right, James, you're trying, Alex, to, assault me, James. You're trying assault to assault me, James. You're trying to assault me, James. I'm an old man don't... with cancer. You well, can James, go don't, please. Well, do what don't I please. ask and no, go. I'm not going to go. And you won't be able to remove me, James. So please don't. Why? Are you, what are you going to do? I'm well, I'm making a statement. I'm, I'm making a statement here for Palestine. A statement of rubbish. She's choking rubbish. Take your book. And go out and support Palestine. I know you want to hit me. I'm not going to hit you, James. No, you're not. You're not, absolutely not right. Not at all. No, no, you're quite Hamas with Israel. You're a silly little man. Well, you're a silly little man. As much as a genocide like. enabler. A genocide enabler, James. Yeah, you talk crap. Gen that's you're all a you genocide can spout. enabler. All you can spout is that crap, isn't it? Genocide well, enabler. Like, from the middle to the thing. Yesterday, I was approached by my boss and asked to remove uh, this badge. And I said, no, I don't want to remove the badge. I'm against genocide. I want a ceasefire in Palestine and I'm going to raise awareness. Now we've got people in here wearing Ukrainian badges. We've got people in here wearing poppies, uh, commemorating the British Army, which actually carried out the massacre in my home town. We've got uh, Ukrainian flags on the wall. We've got, uh, we've got collections for Ukraine going on. We've got every sort of badge, but when it comes to Palestinian badges, suddenly that's offensive. Uh, Steve Headley's joined us. Thank you very much for coming on the show, Steve. How are you doing? Oh, thank you for the invite, Crispin. Yes, I'm. I'm good, thank you. Good. I, I mean, I can't believe what's happened to you with the 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 James Whale thing was <laughs> unbelievable. I've never seen that happen before. It's normally the guest walks out, not the the they're pushed out like that. But then also that that you your job as a supply teacher in the in the sixth form college. Mm. To have a small, tiny, tiny badge with the Palestine colored flag on it, um, and to to lose your job, to be sacked. I mean, you, how do you feel about all this? I mean, the censorship is beyond belief, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, ironically, I was covering a class about McCarthyism shortly before this happened uh, with the sixth form students. It's a sixth form college. And uh, we went back up to the school after I was thrown out and they, they, they made the connection straight away. And obviously, look, I want peace in the Ukraine, but a, a just peace between Russia and the Ukraine as well. Um, I'm not saying that shouldn't happen, but there, there are Ukrainian flags all over the school. And the kids started drawing the parallels. They were going, is it because the Palestinians are brown and the Ukrainians are white and European that we can campaign for one and not the other? You know, so the, the kids are not stupid. They were making, uh, they were making these uh, connections and comparisons themselves. But um, I, I think we are living in an era, and uh, I mean, you've never people who speak the truth have, have never been welcomed. They've always been ostracized. But I think we've now reached the kind of a British McCarthyism over Palestine, where if you mention anything to do with Palestine, if you raise the issue at all. You're, you're in danger of being sacked and victimised and losing uh, your livelihood. And that's something that we can't tolerate. And I'm glad that people are getting together, um, not just electorally. Electorally is, is a good thing, but uh, people are getting together in groups all over the place to campaign for gap for uh, Palestine and raise the issue. Now, on, on the James Whale thing, I mean, I've never quite... I've, I've been sort of in the public eye for about 20 years because I used to have a high-profile job in a trade union. I've never actually seen any uh, present their behavior like that before. And it was sparked because I was wearing a, a Palestinian scarf. Uh, I, I wasn't even on there to talk about Palestine. I was on there to plug my new book, Dairy Boy. And um, we were talking briefly about the book. 
and then he spotted the scarf and it, it, it just went absolutely mad um and I, I think he was deliberately trying to provoke me. I, I got the impression straight away because it, it just escalated so, so quickly. And um, I think he was trying to provoke me. At one stage, he stood over me and said, you want to hit me, don't you? And at, at no point, at no point was I aggressive towards him whatsoever. I mean, that was just like a non-starter. So I just said, well, I'm not going to hit you, James. What gave you that idea? And he, and he had to kind of walk away. Uh, with his tail between his legs because it wouldn't rise to the bit. But I think they were deliberately trying to provoke me, trying to uh, prod me uh, and, and goad me into something that they could then use against me, which isn't really uh, which isn't really impartial at all, is it? I can't I can't believe uh, what I saw there. And, and him saying, sort of bringing up that he's got cancer and that you're going to hit me because and like, he, like, he, like you're some sort of monster that you yeah. hit someone is. Is it, it it's it, is is it going to be difficult for you to find more work? Do you think within that um, supply teaching side? Well, I don't know. I mean, um, I've not had any agencies get in touch with me yet. Um, before this happened, agencies were phoning up every day uh, because there's a lot of supply work out there in London. But um, since that happened, no one's been uh, been in contact. I've been blacklisted before when I was an engineer on the railway. Uh, maybe I'm being blacklisted again. I don't know. But the, the the thing is this. I mean, we might get blacklisted. We might get punished uh, for, for expressing these views. But what not, what's not going to happen is, uh, well, hopefully, anyway, they, no one's going to bomb our houses or kill our children. And what sacrifices we make in this country, they raise the issue of Palestine, are very, very... Uh, small compared to the bravest people in the world, which are the Palestinians and the Yemenis who are supporting them and, and bearing the full brunt of the imperialist attack because of that. So anything that we can do uh, to help Palestine, even in a small way in this country, is well worth doing, I think. Yeah. Well, look, that someone, I mean, I, I, it's very brave and courageous what you do. You're, 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 you were outspoken. You wouldn't let them shut you down. That was fantastic on, on the James Whale, uh, especially. That I mean, he kept trying to talk over you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't let him. Um, now, it, it, someone's put if there's a crowdfunder for you, do you, do you, do you want support from, from people to, 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 if you're blacklisted, obviously, how are you going to get by? No, uh, what what I want to, what I want is for my national my union the national education union to take this up uh, as a as a course uh, a case in an employment tri tribunal for discrimination. We've just seen um, is it Miller uh, Professor Miller has just won a case yeah. about anti Zionism, and I want my union um, to they they take money off me every week for being a supply teacher. I I pay my subs. I want my union to uh, intervene on my behalf. And I have to say, uh, we have a position where trade union leaders, our dogs are barking, trade union leaders are um, standing up in Trafalgar Square in front of hundreds of thousands of people saying how much they support Palestine. But we have Unite and the GMB making bombs and guns and technology that's going to Israel. We have uh, RMT members serving in the Red Sea, um, facilitating <clears throat> goods and weapons getting to Israel. So the trade union leaders must put their money where their mouth is and start telling workers not to cooperate with this ongoing genocide and not to have anything to do with Israeli goods until the genocide is stopped. You know, we have to have a, a permanent ceasefire. And more than that, we have to have a just peace for Palestine because this situation just can't continue. And workers, workers have to play a part in that. And if the union leaders won't do it, we as workers have to organise our own boycotts.